four, three, two, one. Okay, we're looking good. That's a downrange maneuver right there. That looks good. Nice and stable. Okay, got Apogee. We're coming down. Unstable, which is good. Pretty fast though. And there's the shoots. Very gently coming down, a little further down range. Beautiful. Hi everyone, my name's Joe Barnard, that was Sprint Flight 9, and there's not that much to talk about with this. We had a downrange pitch program, most of the telemetry looked pretty good, uh, data dropouts every now and then. Um, we had a couple of bugs that I'll talk about later, but before we do any of that, I want to talk about Sprint Flight 10. That's what's coming up next, and that is the one kilometer test shot. This next flight will be the most difficult and maybe risky flight I've done to date. It's going to be very difficult for Sprint to maintain control under the speeds and acceleration that it will feel. It's going to be very difficult to maintain telemetry lock on the vehicle when it gets that far away. It's going to be very difficult to make sure that we can get the vehicle back safely while you know coming down fast enough that we aren't affected too much by wind while not coming down too fast getting the vehicle stable and plowing into the ground there are also different considerations now for where we're doing this launch how we're setting up pre-flight checks how we're running simulations um, and all of these things considered i think maybe the best thing to do is just live stream it just say screw it Everyone can watch, and if I if it works, it works, and if it fails, you know, don't laugh too hard. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. In the description down below, there is a link to the live stream for Sprint Flight 10. Right now, it's slated for launch in just a couple of days, um, but you should keep your eyes on that link. Uh, you should keep your eyes on Twitter or any of the BPS social channels. I'll put any updates there uh, as we get closer to the date, as weather pans out, um, and as we see when is actually when when is an appropriate time to actually launch this thing. There's a lot of considerations here. I want to do I want to basically put my best foot forward, and so the date may shift around a bit. But right now, it's set for a couple of days. I hope to see you there, and I just I hope I get it back. <laughs> All right, and now let's talk about Flight Nine. Again, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. You already know the whole story. At this point, we're flying with Ava, which has a reaction wheel on top. It uses a GNSS antenna to steer itself. We had a downrange pitch program that you can see in the telemetry software. You can see the position set points as the vehicle is tracking downrange. It follows those pretty well, lags a little behind, but that was anticipated. The reaction wheel's performance wasn't super great, but the success criteria for the reaction wheel is just that we keep roll somewhat under control. The goal is never to lock in at a totally flat orientation, and the vehicle can guide itself even if it has a constant roll rate. So even with those oscillations that we see at the end of the flight, I'm still happy with the reaction wheels performance. We also had a really big thrust vector control mount misalignment at liftoff. That means that the bias that is set on the servo for which way is pointed straight up in the mount wasn't really well dialed in. Um, this is just my fault in pre-flight checks. The vehicle handled it pretty well, but that's why you get that big kick at liftoff. The flight was on an Aerotech G11, which promptly yeeted itself out of the motor mount once the parachutes deployed. I'm pleased to say that after searching quite a bit on the field, I did recover the motor. It's in good shape. 
um, with only minimal charring on the cardboard motor insulator. And now there is motor soot all over. Okay, well that's fun. That's good. Nice. There were two major bugs with trying to launch this rocket, or essentially with the whole launch campaign. The first bug was on the first attempt at launch, during which I was setting up the rocket, we were starting to get cameras rolling, I was right by the launch pad, and the vehicle moved from one of the startup states incorrectly into the full in-flight abort state. And this is really bad. It deployed the parachutes, um, we called it a day, it was, there was a possibility that we could have repacked the black powder, but when something like that happens, you call it a day, you go back and review the code. Um, and as it turns out, we had a bad state transition from one of the startup states to the ready to launch state. Um, not much error detection in that transition, and that caused the vehicle to go into a full-fledged abort mode. It's a pretty bad failure. I just don't wanna, I don't wanna sugarcoat it. It's not that good, uh, I'm not proud of it, and in the interest of transparency, I'm telling you about it now. I would like to do a video on that specific failure um, and a few other failures I've seen and maybe just model rocketry safety in general. Um, but until then, those are the details. Those are the TLDR basically. And then the second bug that I wanted to talk about was a full loss of data recording. At T plus 7.5 seconds into the flight, all data recording is just shut off completely uh, on the vehicle. We're still beaming telemetry to the ground. We're still controlling the vehicle. Ava is still moving through the correct states. Um, but we lost every bit of data after T plus 7.5 seconds, even checking manually on the flash, it's just all gone. Um, and as it turns out, I had more bad error checking in my move data from the flash chip to move to the SD card function. Um, and it, as, as these things often do, it boils down to something very simple. It boiled down to uh, trying to reference a floating point number as if it were a word. Um, basically trying to reference a four or eight byte uh, variable as if it were a two byte variable. And if two of those bytes come back as 255 each, then we come to incorrect assumptions about the data. Is this, I don't know if this is interesting, but I, I like the idea that I just keep sharing all of the details uh, about what doesn't work. Cause I think as soon as you start trying to cover stuff up, it doesn't look good. Um, and we see that with big companies sometimes, and I, it's, not a, it's not a good look. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this flight. I don't have a whole lot to talk about, like I said, so hopefully I'll see you for Sprint Flight 10, no matter what happens on Sprint Flight 10. No matter if the vehicle shreds on ascent, or if we lose it on touchdown, or if it's a total success, no matter what happens, this version of Sprint, these cardboard airframes, they're done. We're done with it. Uh, they're getting really, really beat up, and Sprint as a program is just gonna come to a close after Flight 10, again, no matter what happens. Um, there's so many fun projects in the pipeline. We've got a Launcher 1 model, an air-launched rocket that's like ready to go, minus a little bit of flight code. Uh, we've got the landing program that's starting up again. We've got a couple other things. So um, there's more things to work on. There's more to be excited about. But after Flight, after flight 10, we're gonna be done with Sprint. Um, and that's all, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for hanging out and supporting the project. Hopefully again, I'll see you for flight 10. The live stream should be pretty cool. I've got some fun stuff planned for it. And uh, that's it. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.